Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review and it's actually going to be my first and probably last review from the house of Heaven Duft on the channel. Uh, this is an interesting house to say the least. They're an Indian house if I'm not mistaken. Um, Tausif Sheikh, I believe, is the um, uh, perfumer and owner of the house. And um, Mr. Talsif, uh reached out to me on Instagram and he said, Ramsey, I would like to send you some of my work. And I said, I will be more than happy to receive it, but I have a disclaimer. The disclaimer is I say whatever I want about the stuff. Uh, and so I've had his bottles for a while. He actually sent me four full bottles um, and uh, he sent me a more and Psyche. He sent me... Um, Fraudus Extreme, he sent me uh, Pius, and he sent me some samples of his work. And I've tried them all, and I'm not a fan of, of the ones I just mentioned. However, however, to streamline the process of uh, discussing this house on YouTube, uh, I'm going to talk about the one that I like, okay? So the bottles were sent to me for free, so believe or don't believe a word that I have to say about this, but I'm just telling you from the jump, I did not like any of the other ones that I smelled. So instead of doing a video and bashing each and every single one, um, which I think is overkill for a house that's probably just trying to get its start, you know, obviously I think that um, the blending and his perfumery skills could be enhanced, uh, and, and he has a ways to go, and I think that um, the, the potential in the future is there. But for now, there's one that really caught my attention, and it's called Hajar e Aswad. Now, um, a couple things that I have to say about this. So, first of all, uh, this video may be more of a history lesson than talking about the fragrance itself because I knew nothing about this. This was news to me, okay? And actually, Russian Adam was the one who uh, I asked him about this in the background, and he told me a lot about it because he is Muslim. And disclaimer, I am Switzerland in this, okay? So I'm not preaching Muslim. I'm not pre Islam. I'm not preaching Christianity. I am, I am in the middle. Ram is Switzerland, okay? So I'm just viewing this as a, let's say, interested third-party observer, okay? I am not a Muslim, I do have to say that. However, this perfume is named after one of the most holiest relics in Islam, okay? And that is called Hajar-e-Aswad, which is also known as the Black Stone. So if you just Google Hajar-e-Aswad, like that, it'll come up, and you'll be able to read all about the um, background of the Black Stone. Apparently, from what I was able to gather from the internet and also some of the things that Russian Adam told me. Um, the uh, theology behind the Black Stone is that the Muslims say that it fell from heaven and the Black Stone was originally white, okay? It fell from, the, from heaven and um, whenever it entered the earth's atmosphere, it turned black due to the sins of man, okay? Uh, and it is placed in the eastern corner of the Kaaba. And so apparently whenever um, uh, Muslims, which every Muslim who has the financial ability is supposed to take a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their life, right? Uh, and circling this Kaaba, this building, with this stone, the stone is kind of like the um, central, uh, it's almost like the star attraction, if you will. And what makes this fragrance so interesting, and I knew nothing about this when I sprayed it and actually liked the fragrance. Well, I guess I'm jumping ahead of myself, but we'll continue the history lesson and then we'll talk a little bit about the fragrance. So apparently, you can find videos and, and there is a tradition. They're supposed to walk seven times around it and they walk kind of in unison. Uh, so it's really quite a sight to see uh, many of these men walking in unison uh, around the stone uh, and around the Kaaba and trying to get as close to it as possible because to touch it is almost like uh, your sins are supposed to be forgiven. And what ties it all into this perfume discussion is that the keepers, the Saudi Arabian government, I guess in this case, um, they swipe the stone with attar, okay? So with a traditional attar that, so when the people touch it, they get this attar on their hands and that is what this is supposed to smell like, okay? I'm gonna do a fresh spray just because while we're just chatting about this. By the way, let me show you the packaging because I actually do like the packaging. This is the bottle and you can see the name of the house. It says artisanal perfume down there. I guess that is Hajar e Aswad in um, Arabic. It's got the Heaven Duft um, label on top and uh, it's kind of like a wooden cap when I got this. It smelled like glue, but that has subsided a little bit. Um, but I, I like the packaging. It basically comes like this, and this is kind of a sleeve, if you will. 
Um, this is kind of a sleeve and it comes like this and opened up and this is magnetic right here. So you open it up and the bottle sits in here. Actually very nice packaging. I'm a fan of the packaging. Let's put it that way. And um, it says, Heaven Duft is a luxurious perfume brand that brings you the essence of heaven in a bottle. Each scent is crafted with the uh, finest ingredients to create an enchanting aroma that lingers on your skin and captivates your senses. Um, Tausif Shake, I believe is his name. Um, I apologize if that's incorrect, but I believe his name is Tausif. And um, so what's interesting and what makes this so interesting, and I don't know how I ended up getting on the Indian circuit, if you will. Um, I'm just funnily calling it that. There is no such thing as the Indian circuit. But I have found that uh, there are a lot of houses in India that have been inspired, let's say, by Russian Adam and what he did with Arige La Dore and what his competitors, or you could almost say uh, they're part competitors but part partners because they're building up the whole artisanal oud sort of, um, you know, not brand necessarily, but just making people in the West aware. Many people are not aware. Believe it or not, most of the people who go buy Tom Ford's Oud Wood, they probably think Tom Ford created it, number one. And number two, they probably think it's real Oud, right? I mean, that's just how it is, right? So if you're going out and buying things like Ensar Oud and Aris La Dore and stuff like that, many people have been inspired by what those men have been able to do with their creations. And they want to follow in the footsteps. And India is a very interesting place because... Um, India has a lot of the raw materials right there. You know, obviously, Assam Indian Oud is one of the most, India is almost one of the birthplaces of Oud, and, um, and perfumery. I mean, perfumery in India dates back God knows how long. Uh, many, you know, be the best jasmine, rose oil, distilled right there in the same sort of factories where uh, they've been distilling the oil for hundreds of years. Who knows how long, how far back. There's a a uh, very good sort of video on a tar from um oh gosh i forgot there's a there's a channel there's a channel who i'm trying to think of his name now but i can see his face he's an indian fellow um exotic sense i believe it's exotic sense but he actually goes through the history of Atar and shows some of the places in india where they've been distilling the jasmine petals the rose oil all that good stuff for for god knows how long hundreds of years easily maybe longer uh and so india is a very interesting place to me and what makes some of these fragrance houses i would say interesting and unique from what i've been able to explore is they're 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 selling products that use natural and real materials, which in the West, if you try and create a fragrance that has real jasmine, real oud, real rose, you know, re, you know these kind of ingredients, uh, it's going to be extremely expensive. Now, sticking with just the discussion and the conversational nature of my channel, the other thing to keep in mind, it's important to keep this in mind, uh, is that it's not just going, okay, I'm using real rose oil, so that means it's better. You have to remember that the let just like there's different levels of oud you know you could have one piece of oud that sells for a thousand dollars per um mill right and you could have another piece of oud from the same tree that sells for a hundred dollars a mill same tree but different parts different distillations one maybe is the heartwood one something a little bit different uh and so that makes the comparison very hard and it's very similar with with uh rose and other ingredients other natural ingredients Russian Adam, um, I have a review on my channel uh, from Russian Adam's Malik Al Taif. It's probably my, if you said Ramsey, you get to pick one full bottle of any fragrance in the world right now. Malik Al Taif would probably be my choice. It's my favorite rose oud I've ever, it's my favorite rose fragrance I've ever smelled. Um, and I have a review because of a very generous sample, but I, I've never been able to hunt down a bottle. It's impossible. But he used what's called royal grade Taif rose in there. So there's different levels of rose oil. Um, just like there's different levels of oud, there's different levels of sandalwood. So that is an important discussion. The levels of the ingredients, I think, that are used in India are not going to be as high quality as what you're getting from Ensar Oud or Russian Adams' work at Arige La Dore. It's just not, in my opinion. Um, the, the quality of a lot of the stuff that they get is a little bit lower. That's why I was so shocked whenever I smelled Ambrosia for the very first time by the House of Sherwood because um, this smelled very close to the quality that I'm used to smelling from other houses. It smelled very high quality, Ambrosia did. Um, and so maybe it's not getting to Ensar, but it's approaching, let's say. 
the gap is closing is where I'm going with this, all right? Uh, so India is a very interesting uh, place that I think is neglected by the West. And somehow, some of these folks don't even have storefronts. Like, I don't think, for example, um, uh, I don't think Sherwood has a storefront, right? I, I, I don't think Prakar Gupta's house has a storefront. I think you have to contact him on Instagram still. I recently was sent a parcel from a gentleman who's in India, and he runs a brand called Kashti, K-A-S-H-T-I. And I was very impressed with this particular atar right here. It's called uh, Amritha Bindu, right? Um, but some of the other atars I tried wasn't as impressed with. Uh, the one spray fragrance I tried wasn't as impressed with as the Atar, but this, this Atar is an amazing Atar. Uh, and you know, that's using real sandalwood and real oud and real rose and real, you know, these kind of real ingredients and you can smell, I mean, you can smell the quality, right? So that's the conversation around India. It's a, it's a very interesting, but again, this, I think this gentleman is a very similar situation. You have to contact him on Instagram. You got to find him on Instagram and he'll send it to you directly. They don't even have websites, some of them. Heaven Duft is one step ahead in that front. He has a website. Um, now, one thing that I feel like it's very important to mention is if you go to the Heaven Duft website, which is literally heavenduft.com, um, and you go to Hajar e Aswad, you're going to see two different offerings, okay? One is the pure parfum, which the way he describes it is the difference in the pure parfum is that pure natural materials were used to create the scent, and the artisan version, this is the one that he gave me, the artisan version, is recreated to bring it in the budget for the audience to get their hands on this perfume, okay? So basically... It's 12,500 rupees, which I think translates to something like $150. The Pure Parfum, the one that is sold out, um, and I think it's double or triple the price. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I think it's double or triple the price, and you get 30 mils instead of 50 mils of that, but that's the one that he says is using the pure natural materials. I would have loved to. That's probably more on par with what I'm used to smelling, and maybe that's why these artisan this artisan line that he sent sent me bottles of, it sounds like it's like a recreation, okay, to keep price-wise, right? And um, if you watched my Sherwood reviews, you know I was very impressed with the blending and materials and stuff like that in, in his house. I was not as impressed with the blending and materials of this, but maybe I'm not, I'm smelling one of the lower end brand, of his brand. I, I don't know. I can just tell you that the others were, uh, let's say, not exciting enough to where I don't even want to do videos on them. I'm just going to leave them alone, right? This is the one that I want to highlight. Um, and so think about what the recreation is. I'll read you kind of the, the blurb. It actually came with a card, too, which I um, which I like. I like the whole setup. I like his, um, it says, we appreciate your business. Um, kindly share feedback. Here's the little card that comes with it, scented poetry, and here's the, there's actually the black stone. So that's what the black stone of, uh, what do they call it? The the black stone of the Kaaba, because it's in the Kaaba, I guess. Um, so there it is right there. So everyone's trying to touch that black stone. And that black stone is basically swiped with a tar. That black stone probably smells amazing throughout the day. And it's supposed to be like a special blend. Now, um, here's basically what he says. He says, the Hajar e Aswad fragrance is a true embodiment of the holy and sophisticated scent of the black stone. This fragrance is inspired by the iconic rock set into the eastern corner of the Kaaba in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and has been created with rare and high quality raw materials. The scent profile of Hajar e Aswad is complex blend of woody, musky notes, evoking a sense of darkness and holiness. I will tell you, this is very hard fragrance for me to describe. Um because I'm going to do another spray too, but um, the description of this is hard for me because he's right. It is a woody, musky scent profile, and actually, if you really pinned me down, um, I would probably say that this is a oud musk. Those are like number one and number two smells that I get. However, I get a ton of saffron, a ton of saffron in here. So it's a, it, and there's rose, so it kind of is a traditional rose oud saffron, but it's executed in a very uh, traditionally Middle Eastern style. And, you know, I've, I've heard Russian Adam talk about going into the mosque 
and you know swiping people with you know whenever you go into the mosque it's apparently tradition to if you have an atar swipe some of the people in the mosque as like a offering or whatever so your fellow uh, folks smell good while they're praying right uh, it's linked with with God in in Islam and again I'm not um, if anyone has any more information on this, leave it below, because I'm not a Muslim, so I'm trying to give a second-hand account of something that is very hard to discuss. Uh, and so, basically what he says is, the fragrance is an oriental woody, offering a deep and mysterious aroma that is perfect for those seeking a unique and spiritual scent. And there definitely is something spiritual about this. Um, because it has oud and it has musk. To me, oud and musk are two of the most spiritual scents. Oud, musk, and ambergris, right? Those three are kind of the spiritual scents for me. Um, and oud has turned into one of my absolute favorite notes. I've come a long way since I started this channel two, two and a half years ago. Uh, I felt like I was real, a real novice with oud back then. And thanks to people like Russian Adam and Ensar and, you know, rising, smelling Rising Phoenix and some of these ouds that I've gotten to smell, Sultan Pasha's ouds, um, I've, I've come a long way on the oud profile. And this scratches my oud itch. I'll tell you that right now. It absolutely does. For $150. So here's how I'm thinking about this fragrance. Um, the way that I would be thinking about this fragrance is if you can just imagine these men walking around, it's, it's apparently it's a tradition to walk around the stone seven times. I don't know why that number. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Uh, if anyone has information on that, leave it below. Cause I'm, I'm always interested in learning about other people's cultures and traditions and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I can just imagine the heat of being in, in Saudi Arabia, right? Just imagine being in the desert and spraying on a fragrance like this. And, and this is what I would call traditional, um, you know, a traditional smell of, let's say, being in a mosque or being in uh, a, a prayer with Muslims. This is how I would imagine a traditional Middle Eastern rose oud saffron to smell, right? It definitely has that feel about it. But this fragrance, for some reason, maybe it's a saffron, you know, because saffron, it's interesting because saffron can... Um, um, sometimes have this dusty, almost like licorice-y, like, uh, chemical smell. I've done a This Is Not A Top 10 Saffron video. If you'd like to check that out, you absolutely can. Um, it's, it's, you go to my playlist, This Is Not A Top 10, you'll see the saffron one on there. But it definitely gives it this association, this chemical dustiness that I just can't help but associate with sand and heat. And so it just gives off this heat, shimmery, sand feeling. And I just imagine, you know, and if you pull up videos on the internet, it's actually an amazing sight to see because they're walking in, in unison around this, um, around, I guess you call it the Kaaba. Um, and I, I don't remember if they said, some people say the Prophet Muhammad put the stone in there. I, I don't know the history, I'm sorry. But if anyone wants to leave a proper history lesson in the comments, be my guest. Um, you know, and many people think, obviously, that it is a meteorite, but in Islam, it's a holy meteorite that was white. Again, it got, um, because of the sins of man, right, turned black. Um, and so just imagine being in the heat. I mean, shoulder to shoulder, people trying to move towards the stone to touch it, and it's hot, right? And I'm sure they are just sweating their asses off and walking around there. And I just imagine this fragrance, um... I just imagine this smell projecting like hell in the heat, right? Uh, and in a good way, too. I don't say that in a bad way. In an absolute good way. This thing would just project in the heat. Beautiful projector. A beast mode. Funky. Funky animalic oud. But not so... Not the most animalic. There's what... Um, the first thing that I realized about this fragrance is the oud smelled of high quality. Not the highest quality. Like I said, this is nowhere near my favorite oud fragrance or anything like that. But... You can tell that the oud smells of, of good quality, let's say. You're smelling real oud, okay? Now, um, the way that I would describe this, the, the, the person that I imagine really going for something like this, because I think he ships overseas. You can just go to his website. He'll ship it anywhere on, on earth is my understanding. Um, and so the way that I think about Hajari Aswad is that this is for somebody who is done with the designer ouds, or maybe they've explored the designer ouds to the point where they feel they're 
satiated. They're satisfied, right? They've smelled the Versace Pour Homme Oud Noirs. They smelled the Salvatore Ferragamo Pour Homme Oud. You know, I've got a decant of the Gucci, um, Gucci Guilty Oud, which is in the same bottle as Gucci Guilty Absolute, which I just reviewed a couple days ago, right? There's an Oud. Um, I think it was Tom very kindly excuse me, sent me a little decant of uh, the oud. So I'll talk about that. That's a designer oud. An interesting designer oud, but a designer oud. But they got to the point where they're like, you know what? I've explored the designer oud side of things. As long, as far as I can go, I'm ready to take the next step. I don't want to give Ansar $1,500 for a fragrance, right? Blind. I don't want to, I don't know if I'm going to like it enough to, to really go down the rabbit hole because the oud game, I'm telling you, is an absolute rabbit hole. It is a rabbit hole just in the same way as collecting perfumes is a rabbit hole. It really is. Um, and there's so many different types. There's different types of trees in different regions, and they all smell different. They all have different accords and different profiles and different qualities of the oud oil. Uh, and wearing oud oil, just swiping it on your skin, smells different from having it in a composition like this. There's so much about oud. And I have absolutely fallen in love with oud. I mean, oud is, um, I think, one of the highest materials. I think um, once you've smelled a lot of fragrances and you're ready to take the next step, that's when many people turn to oud because it satisfies their need for some ouds are very aggressive. You know, some ouds are in your face, some ouds are animalic, some ouds are smoky and challenging and woody and um, other ouds smell completely different. They smell fresh, they smell fruity, they smell like Coca-Cola. They smell all, you know, oud is like such a wide ar array, a vast array, right? Um, and so once you're ready to take that next step, that's where I think a fragrance like this can come in. I really feel like this can be like a bridge between somebody going from the designer game to going to the real high-end stuff. Now, I'm saying that, and maybe the Pure Parfum that, you know, because he clearly makes a distinction on the website, maybe the Pure Parfum would have been more in line with the, the quality of oud that I'm expecting to smell from, from the houses that I'm mentioning, which I consider to be the best. I mean, some of the oud oils that Russian Adam sent me in the pure oil form, I didn't know this, but he was telling me some of them go for, you know, $1,000 for three mil or something like that. I had no clue, no clue that they were that expensive. Um, and so, you know, that's, um, that's a, a, a hefty price to pay, right? If you're going from $50 Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir to looking at NSAR's website, you're probably, your wallet's probably like, dude, just close the, close the website, run away, forget about this, right? You're seeing the prices like, 800, 1,000, 1,500. I saw three gram oud oil on Insar's website. I think it's still for, up for sale right now. And it was like five grand for three mils. Now, granted, you swipe a tiny little bit. All you need is a drop and it just, it blossoms. But, you know, that is a rabbit hole. And and uh, that is a, uh, that is a expensive, expensive rabbit hole and hobby to go down, right? So if you want to kind of get yourself in the ballpark, right? You want to smell what a proper Middle Eastern Arabian style oud. Um, you want to smell, uh, you want to smell a traditional uh, Islam, Muslim oud for praying, for prayers and stuff like that. This is what I would absolutely risk. I could easily recommend this. 150 bucks, you're not out that much if you don't like it, um, but I think it does offer quality oud. Uh, like I said, it's not competing with the top dogs. I think this is for the people in the middle. This is for the begin. This is um, this is um, you know not for the ultra beginner. This is not for the first time oud smeller. Let's say you have to have some experience, even if it's with the designers. I would say you have to have some experience, but it's not for the hardcore oud heads either. Because if you're already onto Russian Adams' work and Ensar's work and Sultan Pasha's work, you're smelling stuff that's better than this, in my opinion. Anyways, um, but I wore this to work today. I enjoyed it. It worked beautifully. I love this this set profile. And if you've been following the channel, you have probably seen my oud, um, my interest in oud and understanding of oud grow as the years have gone on. And um, you know this this instantly kind of fits. So it's hard to describe because there's definitely a that smoky barnyard kind of scent is what I is what I get from from the beginning. Um, you're going to get hit with that smoky barnyard woody oud. There's just no way to describe. I don't know how to describe it any other way. It is animalic and funky without being 
too much. You know, it gives you a little bit of that traditional animalic barnyard, um, you know, the, the oud that's associated with Muslims is really the, the, way, the way to describe this oud. Um, and since it's named after the, the black stone of the Kaaba, uh, I, I think I can safely say that, you know, that that is what they were going for. And I think they hit their nail on the head. I've never been to a mosque. So like I said, I'm not Muslim. Um, but I, if you said Ramsey, just imagine what that scent would smell like. I would say this is it. I mean, I think they knocked it out of the park. Now, the other thing is on this little blurb here, Where'd my blurb go? Ah, uh, here it is. It says, We take pride in the creation of the fragrances. We have captured the scent profile of the attar used by government officials to scent the black stone. Now, uh, that is a point of maybe controversy because um, I don't think that that is public knowledge. I think it's like a secret. What they use to the attar that they swipe the black stone with, I think is a secret. So... Um, you know, capturing the scent profile of the uh, attar used by government officials. Maybe he's trying to approximate it. I don't think he's actually working with gov the government officials of Saudi Arabia to create this fragrance. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't take it that way. I think he he's trying to recreate it is kind of what he's saying, right? Um, but... Did he nail that recreation? Yes, absolutely he did, in my opinion. Of all the ones I've smelled, and I smelled these, I showed you earlier, I also smelled these samples up here, which is, um, we've got things like uh, golden sand, which golden sand to me smelled like a, um, golden sand smelled like a Mansara fragrance. I did not like that. And Oud Sami, which I also did not like Oud Sami. Um, and so, but uh, this is the one that I think he absolutely nailed. Just nailed this one. This one, I was like, yes, this is this is exactly kind of what I was expecting. Dark, as he say, holy. It definitely represents that holy. There's something, um, you know, in the old days, they used to think the incense rising up to the heavens is a sign of the prayers of the people reaching God, Right. And so um, there definitely is this holy connection in, Isar, in, in uh, Hajar e Aswad. Um, definitely something that you could make that connection, in my opinion. Um, and, and what I really liked about this scent is the resinous nature. There is a little bit of bergamot in the beginning to get you going, but you know, the citrus notes very quickly get overwhelmed by that smoky oud. There's a little bit of jasmine sambac and, and rose and stuff like that in here, but I really feel like the, even the floral um, bits and pieces here are, are sort of um, complementary. They're curtains and drapes, right, for the main event. The main event is that musky oud, and, you know, musk is kind of another one of those um, ingredients that's mentioned. I think I heard uh, Russian Adam tell me that in, in the Quran, it says that the floor of heaven is um, sort of um, laid with musk, with real deer musk, if that makes sense. So you can see just how intertwined smell and um, the Islamic religion is. And um, so what I like about this fragrance is, yes, obviously the musk and the Oud are sort of the centerpieces, as they should be in a fragrance that's almost, you know, dedicated to the Blackstone. But there are other elements in here that play a very important role. And um, the, the two that I'm really thinking of are the balsam. So there's Peru balsam and there's myrrh. And those two ingredients make the fragrance feel slightly resinous and, 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 and warm. And it just adds to the overall composition of the fragrance. There's also some amber in here. Um, and I think he's very smartly used some notes to recreate that accord, which maybe in the pure parfum is natural, but I think he had to maybe use some ingredients in Hajari Aswad to create that oud accord and make it more compelling. And so what he's used is patchouli and cipriol. And cipriol is a common sort of... Uh, note used to create the oud accord you smell it in many different um fragrances if you've been following my channel i've talked a lot about cipriol and some fragrances like uh, silver oud by amouage 
and um, even Roja's uh, Taif Rose fragrance he released that was crazy expensive. Uh, there was a ton of Cipriol in there, in my opinion, from my from what I was smelling. And then finally, there's some sandalwood in here and uh, Gaiac wood. So the smoky woodiness, it's it's easy to say, well, obviously there's smoky woodiness, it's an oud fragrance, but it does feel like there are some layers in here. You get the smoky woody oud, you get that desert-like saffron, almost like you're just seeing the dunes of the desert rise and fall and the heat wave. It's, it's a beautiful floral oriental oud fragrance, right? I think it's great for someone who's not a true beginner, but someone ready to take that next step. And if you smell this, and you do like I do in the very first sniff, you go, oh yes, this is, this is, you know, your kind of fragrance, then I think you're safe going to the higher priced Bortnikoffs, Aris Ladores, Ensar Ouds, Rising Phoenix, whatever, you, whichever brand you want to start branching out to and exploring. I think if you tried this and, and loved it, you know it's safe and you're only 150 bucks in the hole or whatever if you hate it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my take. Unfortunately, Sorry, the rest from the brand were kind of a miss for me, but, um, you know, it was very kind of him to reach out and send these. And like I said, these were sent to me for free. So believe me, don't believe me, but um, I'm always transparent with that kind of stuff. And that's very important to me. Um, and it's funny because originally when I started the channel, I was like, no, I don't want anyone to send me anything. And then I realized, well, if I don't take stuff. I'm never going to get to smell it and talk about it. So my new motto is take everything, but say whatever the hell I want. So that's kind of the way I approach it. But um, if there is more to either the backstory of Hajari Aswad uh, that you think you should share, I'm sure me and my viewers and, and listeners would love to learn more about that. Um, and if, if you have experience with this fragrance as well, I would love to. Ah, look, we got the uh, this is very satisfying, I'm sure, to some people. Oh, yeah, look at that. Um, so we've got the um, and, and of course, the fragrance. So if you have any experience with Hajari Aswad or Heaven Duft in, in general. Um, you know, I the higher end stuff seems very interesting to me, but when I looked at it, it seemed like he made like six or ten bottles or something very small because obviously it's probably expensive. But you know, if you've been sniffing Ensars and Areej and that kind of thing, that's probably much more comparable to what I've been used to. But um, like I said, a great, I think, uh starter into real oud fragrances because the real oud game is like i said a rabbit hole into itself and it can get very expensive so one thing that in india i feel like they can do that it's maybe very hard to do in other parts of the world is sell a perfume like this at a price like this because you know i i could easily see a modern niche house or whatever you want to call it an artisanal house in the united states trying to put this out and charging double, triple, quadruple what he's charging at 150 bucks, which is probably very expensive in India, $150. Um, but um, if, if you're looking at some of the prices on some of these other brands I've been talking about, you may look at this and go, wow, this is a sort of a cheap deal to get my foot in the door. Um, so anyways, that's my take. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, love the feedback. Do leave a comment. Cheers, guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.